Hello everyone, welcome to my set, I'll call it. I'll call my set for tonight, my set for the Scottish elections. Because today, people, it is Thursday the 6th of May 2021. And today is election day. And the most important day I would say in the democratic history of the country. This has been the biggest decisions between England, Wales, Northern Ireland, sorry, England, Wales and Scotland, not Northern Ireland, but it is uh, one of the most important election days because we got to decide today what, uh, who wants to learn Wales, who wants to learn certain areas of Manchester and England and lots of local elections which are pretty important, people who think it's not important, but I don't blame them for thinking that because it probably doesn't affect them. But what I would say is important would be the London elections where Sadiq Khan has basically left London to be an absolute shambles, bloodbath I would like to call it more, a bloodbath. And well, the Scottish elections. The Scottish elections which are on today where you get to vote who you want to run the country. And we have seen for the last four years, and especially last year, despite Boris Johnston being in the position that he is in now, the amount of criticism the government has taken, they are somehow still at the top of the opinion polls. The YouGov polls still how, somehow still think that the Conservatives are better than the Labour Party. Why the hell would they still think that? Because the Labour Party is weak. But... That's not what we're talking about. What we've also been having to mention to hear about all the time, although it's seven years concluded still, is the SNP's will of referendum in Scotland. Scotland uh, decided in 2014 to be part of the United Kingdom, and then in 2016 decided to use the emotional strain and says you're again dragged against our will, or uh, using it against our high heels and call us like clay babies because someone didn't like the result of the election in 2014 when we decided to leave, sorry, the, the main part of the UK, but leave the EU, which would have screwed them up anyway, if they actually did. Now they seem to think they can have a mandate with this election today. And if you let the SNP in, which we're going to go over in these flyers here, we're going to show you exactly what these parties and what these people are again exposed for because i want to talk about the different parties and i want to the, if you've seen this video yet great have you voted yet well it's too late you voted but we are very special different elections and this is going to be focused on the main scottish ones this will be scottish elections because we don't really have an influence up here in london and probably Sadiq's going to win anyway, unless you vote him out. You don't like the guy, London's a shithole, vote him out. But the opinion polls might say different. But I like, like the American guy, he's quite good. Leo Mayor for London, wherever it is. But, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about Scotland. Scotland right now is on the threshold between getting a Tory win or an SNP win. But the fact is, the SNP right now, led by Nicola Sturgeon... The ones who want the force independence, although they change their mind every two fucking seconds or every different person you speak to, or how this is going to be done and how it's not going to be done, might determine who wins. And you will get take a look at the two main competitors later, but I want to show you the other parties. And I want to show you the other ways this has gone about. And, well, these other parties has been about, if you're too late, I'm sorry you voted. And I want to show you the different parties. They might come out in, in their little ballots. This is one to show you. There's many, many different ballots. We're talking about Murray. I've, there are 28 different parties going for the Scottish elections this year. 28, quite a lot. But 28 probably won't end up on your ballot. And this, we've got a good 15 parties to talk about. A few things like that. And if you haven't shared this video already, please like, share, subscribe, and share your friends before they vote. Because we need to find out what these parties are like. Because it, sometimes when 
ballots come through your door, you're like, this is rubbish, but you don't read it and you just vote for someone anyway. Well, that doesn't make you much useful. You look like a low information voter. You look like an idiot normie that doesn't know what the hell they're talking about. So with this little video here, I'm hoping that I've made some sort of sense. I'm going to help you decide what to vote for. So let's go and begin, shall we? So the Scottish elections are coming Thursday, 6th of May, which is today. And what are special with these ones is we get two ballot papers. We get the local area ballot paper and the larger electoral area. Electro, electoral area. So you get two different ones, and this is what's making it a lot more confusing for people. I would say just vote for the party twice in the same paper, for reasons I will explain later. But... That's a, that's the point. There are different constituencies in Scotland. There are multiple of them. I can't mind how much there are. But there are more constituencies than legions. Legion is like Mully, Aberdeenshire, Highlands and Islands. That makes sense. And if you're on about constituency... Oh, for fuck's sake, I can't even speak English. <laughs> Contis yeah. yeah, I'll get the word later. You know what I'm on about, this one. This is like your local council area. The one, or very, very, very local council area. That's the one I'm on about. That's what the purple one is for. And, you know, you have to do the voting thing and the mask and so on, but it doesn't matter. That's not what we're on about. We're not on about that. What we want to talk about is these different parties. And what we want to show you before you vote for today's election is to show you these different parties. And I want you to, you know, get to take a look at what the options are. And there are options that people have been listening to and heard to, but I want to give you my opinion of this as well. And so, let's begin. Now, we know most of these big parties are like the Conservatives, the Dems, SNP, uh, Tories. They're the big parties. One of the smaller parties is the Reform Party. Actually, I'm going to take these away because that's just distracting. And where's my camera? There it is. The Reform Party. There we go, that'll be helpful. The Reform Party. Everyone knows these people already. Or if you didn't know them, this is Nigel Farage's party. Otherwise, it's the Brexit Party. This is their party in this... Like I said, this area is mostly muddy, all these ballots. But it's okay, they still can count in different Scottish areas. We don't have them all. There's 28 um, different parties, like I said. And... Well, we've only got like 15 of them. Sorry, can't help it. They didn't give me enough, so done. So we're going to talk about the Reform Party, which is basically the Brexit Party. It's not run by Nigel Farage anymore. It's run by different people. But let's go and take a look at what the Reform Party wants. Actually, which way I'm going to look at this? Oh, we can actually open this. I didn't actually notice that. Um, so um, let's see. The Reform Party believes the common sense of turning our freedoms back to the people and reforming the way that we were governed before, which, if anyone hasn't noticed, that has been very, very violated right now between Boris, Nicola, and the Welsh guy. Because I can't be bothered remembering his name. Because with, right now, in Scotland, you're not allowed to actually say the word woman because it's transphobic or something stupid like that. I'm not joking. It sounds silly, but it's true. Um... There's like hate speech laws in Scotland where it's basically violating the UN's Human Rights Act and there's plenty of other things with the restriction with the, I'll call it COOF because we're not allowed to use its name on the social medias of the, you know, the, the d disease that came from unspecified China country, that one. There's a lot of our rights and freedoms been taken away very quickly. And for people to think that going back to normality is happening, kind of true, but if you're listening to what the actual Scottish, Scottish government is telling you, the what they recommend is level zero is, is not freedom, like Boris is offering them, although that's probably going to change with the news that we've seen recently. Most of these things are probably going to change, because most of the things that Nicholas Palmer stuff, level zero, we still got to wear masks. Says the country that wants freedoms, watches Braveheart all the time, 
and somehow is happy to wear masks all the time. But then I don't know. Maybe I don't know enough. Um, so back to this. This is why I should do more video stuff that's not important. But anyway, let's talk about this. So the return of our freedoms, restart the economy, restore education standards, rebuild the NHS and reform Hollywood, which is probably quite a good idea, to be honest. Most of them. Come on, listen up. Uh, the return of freedoms. There could be no going back to lockdowns and there would be no case for democratic, sorry, domestic vaccine passports, which are quite violating in their own right. For anyone who thinks it's great to tell everyone what you have or health disease and everything and you can't go on the planes, buses, leave the country, papers please. Um, we have voted against COVID restrictions that are not supported the clear Pacific evidence, which is true. We believe the proponent, sorry I can't speak English, the response have laid out the future principles should be followed by our contract with the people. We've voted against hate crime bill. We will seek the appeal in the next parliament. Good luck if that would ever work because we would like the hate crime bill that I mentioned there gone. But we're not going to get that because the SNP is probably going to get a big majority and the Greens are going to back them up. Um, they start the economy with a lower simplified tax rate, higher growth. We've have a fully costed plan that will attract the enterprises and some job creation which could put up £1,500 back in your pocket. We'll drive the wealth creating private sector to be a... <laughs> Sorry, uh, this is what I get for leading like... <clears throat> £1,500 back in your pocket, drive wealth creating private sector to be enable high quality public services, we will seize the opportunities that leaving the EU prevents, which is what the SNP want us to be dragged right into. The number, they want us to be part of the vaccination law that's going on over there, apart from the one that's successful in the UK. Shows what site they're on. Yeah, we're going to criticise them the entire time, but uh, anyway. Uh, the sort of education standards, which have also dropped, they've been horrible. And I'm really worried for the education in the future if we allow to keep the same people in charge. Um, the scrap the cu curriculum of excellence and restore the control of classroom learning to our teachers. You know, it's not as bad as in the States, but here we go. Uh, we'll champion play-based early entries of curriculum that gives children the foundation of formal learning ensures good social skills and builds the confidence that leads them to good mental health, a thing sorely lacking in our young children nowadays and young adults, because we tell them they're the worst things in the world because of their skin colour and everything else, especially if you're a male. You know what I'm on about, if you know what I mean. Sorry. Um, we'll support the rich curriculum that we're in with an equal weight given to the epidemic to vocal learning and preparing for young people for their life, which it needs to be actually encouraged more. We need to encourage that a lot more than it is. Um, what else is there? Rebuild the NHS. Well, that's pretty easy to say because we don't, I mean, you can lead that, but I'm spending too long on one party. Uh, the Like, okay, we obviously need the NHS to be functioning and it's quite obvious. Uh, needs the reform because waiting times are unacceptable, especially in Scotland. They're worse in Scotland than they are in England. How's that possible? Bad management. Very simple. Uh, standards to prevent care, job satisfaction, driving our policies. We champion the creation of NHS as a force to respond to times high demand in the crisis. We'll operate a similar basis to the Army Reserve. Well, see how that goes. I don't know what to make of that opinion, but let's go to the, the form of the Holyrood Parliament because I think Holyrood actually needs to get a little bit more powers in certain aspects. But our Parliament has been misappropriated. The boundaries between politicians, civil servants and the 
traditionally have in endured. After three years, there is an urgent need for a full adapted review. <laughs> Ad sorry, uh, the view of the Parliament of the Scottish Government. We will put the power first by focusing on proving service uh, services, developing power to local areas, and ensuring and oversighting government decisions. And basically, that's quite ideal because although I love these ideas, they're probably impossible. And, well, the thing is, people don't seem to realise that although the government and the BBC like to tell you the Westminster is the bad guy all the time, it's not always their fault. It is Hollywood. If the Hollywood government would centralise some of their powers to the, the local councils, because when the Westminster gives them money, it goes to Holyrood, and then Holyrood tells the local councils how to spend money. If they want to spend, if the council wants to spend money on the road, they could say, "Okay, but not so much because we want you to build on the school that you don't need." That's just an example. But the, for, for the foreign party, free speech means being able to debate openly issues and if, that affect us, and hearing opinions that might not be like to agree with. Using your vote to fight. Uh, sorry, use your vote to back free speech by repelling the hate speech bill, and these are all the positive defences for the the reform party, education, um, no more lockdowns, no masks in class, economic growth, public sector works for the public, the end of centralisation and police fire brigade services. And energy and conversation policies value to our countryside weather. Um, yes, although the the form party is quite sorry, I couldn't read. I'm just it's been a long day. Um, anyway, the form party, although it is a good party, I like it. It's small. That's the problem. I wouldn't vote for them because they're small, but if you want to vote for them, that's fine. I am no issue whatsoever. Moving on. <laughs> right. Hope you like Socialists. Welcome to the Socialist Party. The Socialists of Scotland. And they... I'm not going to leave everything on it, but I'm going to let you see it right here because this is probably full socialism. Why the Labour Party lost its power in the first place. And this group of people have been out for a while, they are socialists, you know, the USSR type of people, and they want to... I'll, I'll point out the, ease, the main things here, because I spent way too long on that stuff there. Um, they want to pay rises, jobs, homes for all, take wealth, wealth from the 1%. Well, we not live in America, so that's useful, I guess. Um, Socialist MSPs on the workers' a workers' wage, kind of ugly. Uh, build mass movement to defeat the Tories on independence too. Weird, okay. Um, we're gonna look at the spot the difference. No, actually, no. What we're gonna do? This is what they demand. T U S C. We can look at our people later, but we don't really need to pay their attention. These are socialists. They're quite. This is quite obvious of how they want to do stuff. We've seen a lot of this stuff with the Joe Biden administration already, and we've seen this a lot in China and all these places where socialism has been put in, and it just kind of went to a disaster. But if you agree with this stuff, that is completely up to you. This is just my opinion, and this is my video. So anyway, a fifteen pay like fifteen percent pay rise for the NHS care workers increased the minimum wage to twelve thousand pounds an hour. Step to the fifteen for all. The only thing is, the NHS is incredibly underfunded and undermanaged. The NHS staff deserve to get a higher wage than they do already. And that's not including last year's efforts. Although Nicola did give them a high percentage raise, it was only just to make the toys look bad. It was plain politics. It's annoying. And, well, we all agree, but the thing is, 12 to 15... That's going to cost the taxpayer a lot more money, especially when you can't even open your bar, that can't, you can't even afford to, give, to pay the staff member the £9 an hour late. That's for an example. 
Um, moving on. Uh, build 10,000 home quality council homes for rent in the highlands and islands. Backing, sorry, back living rent, sorry. <laughs> wow, can't, I can't read, it's too late. Um, back, back leaving rent campaigns demands on tenants. True, needs to be done. Needs to be done a lot more because tenants of well, they exploit a lot. But I'm not going to argue because I live in one of them. Uh, the Scottish Government uses powers to deserve welfare cuts, mismanaged pensions, age increases the top of benefits. Mm, okay, I guess so. Uh, make, make the rich pay double income tax to the top 1%. Leaves billions deserve the cuts. Interest the major infrastructure projects in the Highlands and Islands. I forgot. You know how much billionaires live in Scotland? None. Okay, maybe two. But, <laughs> like, you tax the 1%. That's quite an easy thing to do, but that doesn't give you more money. It's when you start annoying the, the normal workers, that's when it gets annoying. But invest billions on publicly owned renewable energy, creating thousands of Quality jobs in your region for so social change and climate catastrophe. Right, the climate problem. You know, the one that doesn't really seem to be a problem right now. Although Scotland seems to think, oh, we're, we're ahead of that. New Zealand. It's proven New Zealand has already been beating us to that kind of char target already. And they're about to work with China. So, you know, fun. And we don't actually like socialism in Scotland, so good luck if this is ever going to go anywhere. Um, build new mass working class party in the, the five public ownership of the economy and an independent socialist Scotland. Ah, so they want an independent Scotland so they can run it themselves. Because, I mean, it's not like the SNP are basically doing that themselves. Now... I mean, we don't, I don't like socialism, okay? I really hate socialism. Although you sound like I was agreeing with some of the things they said there, that was too much words for me to read. And you know how long it took me to read the reform one? Basically the first 10 minutes. And yeah, that was the fun. Um, it sounds okay, it sounds good. You, the thing is you have to learn when you look into politics this much, you have to learn people are saying things to make you want to vote for them let alone if they actually do anything when they're in power. And the independent Scotland idea doesn't work. I'm sorry, it doesn't. If we would gain more money than England was, if we were just as wealthy as England was, that would be different. But the thing is, we're not quite that in that position yet. But let's go and talk about one of my other better options, the Scottish Family Party, which some people have said to be not a big fan of which I get, but then you have to understand where they come from with all these things. They've basically came out of the woods with the, I think it was one, the teacher guy, I can't remember, sorry. Um, they're basically quite decent in what they want. They really want to go to the old Christian methods way of how they want to do stuff. And they want to, and, um, they want to endorse a lot of the things that I would personally value more, which I've obviously changed in my views for the last year of a few things that's been going on. But the Scottish Family Party has been quite good into what they want and what they want to give people. It, it's mismessaged a lot. These are the same people that you've maybe seen on the BBC, like projecting words onto the, I think it's abortion centres in Scotland and all that stuff. It's mismanaged a lot, but if you watch them on their Facebook and their YouTube, they actually are asking for really decent stuff for Scotland. And if Scotland could actually be more caring, I think this is the party to go for. Um, okay, the word's going to sound stupid, but don't worry, we'll try and explain them somehow. Um, the Scottish Family Party, we value families. As a strong building block and strong nation, Offering financial advice for families. Of course we do. We support families. We know 
most of the people that are, who are deprived are poor and not getting a lot of family support. And a lot of the support that the governments have been giving them has been basically nothing. And if you, as has been proven, the education has fallen. And in education, if you're poorer, you're less likely to get good education. And if you're poorer, sometimes you don't actually have families. And a good nuclear family actually helps people a little bit better. It makes them feel better. It makes them, you know, it's, it works. It's a nuclear family. It works together. We all like working together. It's nothing cynical. Prote we protect children from vulgar... No, sorry. We, we protect children... From vulgar and then comper entering sex education, sorry. Um, yes, that's what one of the things they actually didn't kind of got through. They they do actually. <laughs> what they're trying to say there is the the whole thing when they're trying to teach sex education in schools. They're not doing exactly the way that it is, and I know this because I've seen it in kids. They're trying to teach kids some of the gender neutral norms that they've been trying to push through for the progressive stuff, but they've also not been really telling children how to, you know, respect women. They've been basically saying, okay, when you're old enough, you can do this and do that to the female, right? They're not really doing it well in the education system. And the teachers who have basically joined this group can do that. But there is a whole video on the Scottish Family website which goes through this whole thing and I can't explain it because I'm not part of the party. Anyway. Um, with respect life, opposing both abortion on demand and assisted suicide. Yes, this one sounds stupid. But the thing is we've had lots of MPs from both sides, Tories and so on, to actually support assistant suicide. Yes, it is illegal in Scotland, but does it stop them from pl implementing it? No. But look at the Scottish hate crime bill. That was implemented and that was against the human rights of free speech. No one talks about it now. Weird. Uh, we support parenting, fair tax allowance and benefits for families with full, uh, with, uh, yeah, a full time parent. Sometimes in Scotland and sometimes with families, it's not as so perfect as I described up there where you get the mum, dad and brother and sister and the whole family works at one big happy mansion family. Doesn't quite work that way with some people. Some people actually need the benefits to help them. Although I'm not a big fan of the benefits system because it doesn't work for everyone, it needs to be looked out for the families. And when parents and children are suffering, like I said, the poorest ones in society right now are getting nothing of it and more likely they end up in crime. Not fun. Uh, we demand academic league a good behaviour in schools. We always do that and like just going back to schools again that really I'm not really caring about that. <laughs> uh, sorry academic league. Um, not really that bothered with that stuff because it's not my subject, sorry. Uh, we promote marriage, suitable for family life benefits anyone. I, I, I don't know how you supposed to argue with that. Like, we all love marriage. Gay people can get marriage. Like, everyone can get married now. Simple. <laughs> like, do we have to, like, think about this anymore? We can get married now, Jesus Christ. Uh, we protect free speech, a thing that I've mentioned before, opposing the hate speech registration, which is absolutely horrible because you're not allowed to say certain words anymore. And, well, here's the last one. <laughs> we oppose trans transgender ideology. Says it like there. Don't argue, it says it like there. Uh, especially on confusing the ch of children. Now, I get what you mean by that. It does sound like they're trying to be transphobic. They're not actually trying to do that. 
I'm trying to defend these people. But you need to watch their main video on this subject, Scottish Family Party. Find them on YouTube. There you go. Or their Facebook and so on. The, you know, they'll get a full explanation of what the actual this thing says. What they're trying to say is, when you're trying to teach children this when they're younger, there's children who are suffering lighting. They're like, they, they can't read, they can't light, they can't, you know, they can't do the complicated normal stuff. And you're trying to throw in this, there are 100 million gender identities, which are alone itself, is actually destructive to the person themselves. And children, although they might seem clever, or some people might think they're clever than the most, does actually help when it make it worse. It makes it worse for the children. And the reason they're opposing the gender ideology is because I think they're on about this in the main construct, not as in the individual. Individuals can make whatever identity what they want. I'm a unicorn and a horse in the same day, so it's confusing, I know. I hate hate, so I'm joking. Um, like then they're just on about this in the main concepts. I'm, we're not saying this, I'm not saying this is a like anti-gay, anti-transphobia uh, and all that stuff. I'm not on about that things. He, they're just on about in the main concept. Wait until the children are old enough to comprehend what this all means for them. When you're trying to teach them this, when they try to learn two times two, it's complicated for the children. It's really not that hard. Like, I mean, it is hard for some people, but... Um, sorry, I just found another one I don't actually need to look at because that's nothing important. Um, I, I hope that made sense, but go on to their website to find out what it means. Pardon me. Vote like the future depends on it. The Vote Green Party. In this election, the future is at stake. A chance to tackle the climate crisis to build a fairer Scotland in the pandemic and ensure the future and independent Scotland Greens MSB deliver so much for Scotland and with your vote we can demand even more! How fucking fantastic they sound! They don't because they, they are horrible. They're basically the SNP and the Lib Dems in one. That's, that's all they are. So let's go and see what they want and see what they have. Um, what the Scot the Scottish Greens will have a solution to the climate agenda if you actually care about this stuff. I do not like the Green Party because they're just the SNP. They basically have the same policies, the same ideals and the same everything. Right? That's basically the problem. And to put it vaguely, they're just horrible. All they want is power and they'll batter anyone who disagrees with them. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's basically what they do. Um... Um, this chance will tackle the climate emergency because we're all going to die. That wasn't scary enough. Okay, fine. Um, I'll get back to this. Uh, with the company to ensure the future plans in an independent European country. Now, that's if you get back in the European Union, Catalonia and all that European problem. The financial problems don't arise everywhere or anywhere. Um, what the Scots Greens will... Uh, for, uh, sorry. Uh, sure, the green recovery made over 100,000 jobs investing in the public transport, warm body, warm homes and renewable, renewable energy. But you're going to cost the taxpayer a lot more money if you're going to stop them from selling them homes because you don't have the light boiler in your home. Yeah, that, you didn't think about that one, did you? And that, we've heard those stories before, and they're what the Scottish ones are preparing to do. Because the people are just somehow that gullible, they will just do everything you tell them. I'm joking, you, you're not that stupid. I know you're my supporters, you don't do that. You actually use your common sense. But in Scotland, a lot of these people would just agree with them, regardless of what their future would be impending on them. The clue, 500,000 additional teachers to help our schools and the young recover from the pandemic. Yes, we would love to do that too, but how realistic is that? Not very. Especially when you start shutting down schools with three cases of coof. Of or COVID. In Elgin High School right now, 250 pupils have just decided to, well, no, they haven't decided, they've been told to, you know, self-isolate, which means the parents, if they, 
<laughs> you know, if they were working, they have to go back home and look after the kids. Clever. But the thing is, they all back up the S&P though, regardless. But, I mean, I know there's some reasons behind all that, but I'm, I'm blagging. Here we go. Invest in NH has included an additional 223, sorry, 235 million each year on mental health services, uh, protecting the children and young people. Yes, we know that. You care so much about them. But the thing is, it doesn't make a difference. Giving money to the problem isn't going to solve the mental health crisis, opening up the country, letting people act like normal human beings with their own decisions will. To start, but that's not what we're on about, sorry. Um, the Green will achieve, apparently. Evictions banned on during the pandemic. They store school gla uh, grades unfairly lowered by the SQA, which was actually one of the things I gave it please of them to do, because there was a lot of pupils who have been downgraded from teachers as results. And yes, there's a little problem in teachers' unions too for actually downgrading the kids. But then it's also the government and the SQA's problem for making these children or young adults gain less qualifications than they deserved because you stopped them from getting their exams. Well done. And, right, anyway. Weekly COVID tests... Ensure the NHS is protected, that's fine. Free bus travel and young people for the summer. Um, yeah, okay, whatever. I mean, because that's going to change. Safe lock Roman from destructive development. Yeah, okay, because everyone cares about lock Roman all of a sudden. No offence. Uh, a decent pay lies of the public sector workers with 100 million. Free school meals and primary Meals of the summer next year. Well, you should kind of even think about that all the stuff beforehand. But it's okay, you didn't think about that. But it's okay, you thought about it now, so that's decent, I guess. So, let's go and talk about one of my <laughs> unexpected favourites. The Labour Party. And I think we have another thing of the Labour Party over here, which I left. Because they like giving you names on their voting ballots for some reason is annoying, so you have to tip X them out. So let's go and talk about the Labour Party. Uh, let's go and see. Well, I'm actually, oh, let's see, I've got these two here. Uh, which one is actually gonna be much worth, they're both the exact same thing, so. Um, to be honest, we don't need that one, that's the local one. I am getting really impressed by this guy. Asa Sama, Asa Sama, sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. This guy, wow, he's been calling out the controversy between the Tories, the Labour, and the sorry, the Tories and the SNP. He's been calling these people out, and it's like it's absolutely amazing. But you're the Labour Party. Remember how that went in 2019? Not so well. Jeremy Corbyn, nobody knows who Sakir Starmer is. And lots of social justice warriors taking over the Labour Party instead of caring about workers, you're caring more about social justice politics. Sorry, that's just how you lost. And that's why they basically lost, because no one wants socialism. And that's what the Labour Party was basically promoting, socialism. And, well, let's see, we'll focus on... Un uh, so, uniting the bond of the National Recovery Plan which is good. I like this guy. This guy took sense. I wish I could vote for him, but the party is probably not going to get anywhere. But if you're in a Labour area, vote for them. Get your Labour back. And maybe we can get a good Labour party in Scotland. Because remember, the Labour party in Scotland is different from the England one. The England one's probably more corrupt, but this one actually is actually a little bit nicer. Remember, everything in politics is slightly nicer and more obvious, more direct, and more significant in Scotland politics. Why? I don't know. Um, jobs recovery, guaranteeing jobs for every young person, Scott Investing National Training for the Business Fund, can't argue. NHS recovery, funding the cancer treatment back in track, improve mental health, give careers. Yes, that's exactly what we need. So vote for them in your area. 
education and recovery, culture, plan, invest in schools, ensures IT support in every primary school. And secondarily, yes, must be needed. Climate recovery, invest in green jobs and same thing as the Green Party. Um, just, you know, make them the best green country ever. Uh, community recovery, creating community recovery funds, invest in loyal areas and make our community safer. Sorry about that. Um, the internet kind of went. Um, yes, and basically all those things were good about the Labour Party. They are good. They are things we all want to focus on. But you're the Labour Party. <laughs> you're just not that person. But if you want to vote these people in, I would strongly suggest vote them in because any vote away from the SNP is a better vote than anything else. And this man might be the change the Labour Party needs. And if we're going about the working class person, this man might be the job. Not as cool as I wanted it. Um, so, and when I mention about that stuff, we have to talk about All For Unity. This is the party by George Galloway, the big guy here in the, sun, the glasses and the hat. Basically, George Galloway... I don't really know him that well, but George basically has his segment on RT and I've listened to it a few times and he's got his own party now. And I'm not going to explain all this and if you've got your own ballad, this is it here. Um, Scotland's a crossroads in May 6th, you can put the SNP the Lula independence too, but only if you vote tactically in the vote, you're smart to get them out. Yes. And... It's pretty true what he's been saying. Everything so far has been tactical. And they, they, he was actually, I'm actually quite impressed by this guy, this party's decision. Basically did what the other parties did. Well, the Brexit party did during the 2019 election was basically says, don't, don't vote for us, but vote for the area that you know technically will win for you. That makes sense? But if your area was usually Lib Dem and it was taken by the SNP, fight as a Lib Dem. If your area was a Tory taken by the SNP, fight as a Tory or Lib Dem or any other, a Labour, like I said there. And that's what their main objective is. And basically, the entirety of his party here is their aim for unionists. And we have been listening to him. And let's go and see what he actually says here. The percent of votes needed for all unity to win seats in each of the regions across Scotland is 6%. 20% of the voters who feel George Galloway would provide the strongest position to their opposition to the SNP, probably very true. Although sometimes he does speak a lot of shite sometimes, but he it's true. He would give a real good opposition. That's why I think he suggests to vote them in slightly, like, on the purple valid compared to the amber one but I'm not quite sure um, they're in the different legions and so on does it actually say what they stand for or just okay basically <laughs> okay um, doesn't really say it here um, basically they are the main party against the SNP they stand against the hate crime bill, they stand against Nicola Sturgeon's lane, they stand for destruction that she's caused Scotland for the entirety of her lane. That is basically what it is. And a reinforced message, if your area was a previous area that had Labour, Lib Dems, Conservative, vote for those parties in that area. And I would tell you that too at the end of this video. But anyway, moving on. Now, let's go and look at this amazing, fun, <laughs> the ABBA party. ABBA party, the Mamma Mia kind. Yes, this is Alex Salmon's main political party. The opposition of Nicola Sturgeon. The opposition of, I vote for me for independence because I have all these SNP supporters that supported me back in the day. Have no bleph left. But this is basically what... There's actually absolutely nothing on this. Look, giant ABBA. Hey, ABBA, sorry. Um, what they want is independence. Uh, tip the balance of Scotland's favour of the SNP and the ABBA party, although their option here is to actually tip the scales towards their decision, which I get, 
but it might not work. Um, what success party that can Legion to go to them, but we can say the same on our side if we just work together again. Uh, they want to go to independence for a super majority. Love that word. Super majority. And they will get their votes in and they will get independence and everything will be fantastic and everyone will get unicorns and everything like that. It's very simple. They just want independence. Like, how, how can you explain that anymore? It's very simple. Now... Oof. My favourite. Jimmy Clanky, Kim Jong Nicola, and the SMP. Better days ahead, it's time to prepare for the future. Although you had 14 years to make this country better, this country has been a fucking disaster. Just to say. But apparently if you vote for them this time, things will change. Although they've had 14 years in power, they can make things different again. And I'm not, I really don't want to explain to you how bad these people are, but I'm gonna leave a comment in the description below or where the there's 200 things the SNP have done, the Lou and Scotland, such as spending billions on things that they don't know where the money went, spending money on independence campaigns instead of getting into the NHS, saying the European Union vaccination rollout is amazing, although the UK one gave them all the vaccines they could need, although Nicholas somehow can't give 5 million Scots the same amount of vaccines that Boris could give 40 million. Weird. And plenty of other things like killing, like her policies, which I'll tell you right now, her policy with the old folks homes or the care homes, where 300, 3,000 people died because of her policies on that exact thing, which they eventually came out and told everyone. So apparently it's all forgiven now. But there are many things the SNP have done, which I have no time to explain right now, is to um, show how things are better. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, okay, everything's better because it's Nicola Sturgeon or Kim John Nicola. Lovely. It's like, you've had 14 years. The English basically hate us now. Like, if they don't hate us already, if they want us to go independent, they're going to basically say, well... You can just fuck off. <laughs> that's that's how annoyed that she's made us all look as Scots. And as Scots, we've actually done this to ourselves too. We've made people turn against friend or foe if you don't agree with them. I've seen people in a Bax uh, Baxter's, a company where that they make jam and lubab and all that stuff. Like they make soups and all that. They were helping during the pandemic. They stayed open. Uh, last year, they came out and said they joined the Unionists, and the SNP supporters decided to say to them, well, we're going to boycott that company because they don't support Independent Scotland. Lovely people. I'm sorry, I don't like people who want to tell me I'm the bad person for not agreeing with them. And they're the ones who basically hate my neighbour to the English. And I would like my prospects... I would like my children's prospects, my grandchildren's prospects, to be heightened. I would like us all to get opportunities in future so we can enjoy this island and join together as a union. But these SMP, if they get their way with their damn independence effort, then, which they're going to change their mind on anyway, we can stop them from winning a majority. Yes, they... NHS care services fail in the future, equip children and succeed tomorrow's world, although they, they've basically fucked it up for their education because they've screwed up their education, they screwed up transport, they screwed up taxes, they screwed up everything, they screwed up the fairies, they screwed up the islands, they screwed up COVID, they screwed up everything, they screwed up 200 different fucking things. Do I have to explain this to people? I do, because there's a lot of sheep. But us lot on our community tabloids, we all know... Common sense is not in this party's favour. But we can vote them out. And basically, I don't really need to explain to you what's on here. You did see if you ever paused the screen at all. That's basically it. They're just asking you for the same vote. They're going to keep the same thing for four more years and see what happens. Now, I don't have the Lib Dems. But we have the Tories. Yeah, I've got a lot of Tolly stuff for some reason, but it's not like because I'm a big fan of them. 
I just had to vote for these people every time because they were the best of the worst choices. But although people are not big fans of this man here, Douglas Loss, local man of myself, uh, we all both know, we all know here, people, that although Luke Davidson, Douglas Loss, and all the other Tories are not the best people to choose in the world, we can actually beat them. Sorry, we can beat the SMP. If we vote for the Tories, all the, well, okay, I, I'm not saying myself here. Well, I'm too far ahead of myself. In the Mully Local Legion, we have Tim Eagle, local man. We have been keeping the SMP on the tail. This is how the results were in the last Scottish election, which is the whole Scotland. But the Conservatives have been holding Mully for a long time. So if you can keep them in power, we should be okay. But that's not the point. Right now, we're in a very, very dire situation where the only opposition we have now is one I mentioned before is, well, I, I guess we could talk about this. Um, like vote conservative, ah, uh, here we go. Um, their plan is to rebuild a fiber broadband rollout, which also another thing the SP have failed to do. Um, two billion extra for the NHS. Good knows where you're gonna get a money tree from, bolus. 500, 500 pounds of skill grants for everyone, recruitment for 3,000 more teachers, local policing. Get great. That just sounds like everyone else has been offering stuff. But I'll let you see these articles here on the page here. Um, like most of these articles have actually came from the SP themselves, which, which is funny how. Their tollies should really be working together, but I, I don't know which one I want to look at. That's just one thing. Um, oh, I don't know how to explain this. Sorry. Um, okay, this is the easier one. Stop another independence referendum. The independence referendum, although it might sound like a good idea, is very destructive. There's no actual plan in place. And if there actually is a plan in place, please fucking tell me if there is. Because the independence, what we're getting offered right now, is absolutely shameful. Like, if we're going to get independence, we're going to get basically Catalonia, Venezuela, Cuba, and hopefully something works out for the best. And maybe we join the European Union. That's all we've been given. But right now, we have a great opportunity, which I'm guessing I'm going to use this now because I threw it away. We have a great opportunity right now, although most of us in Scotland do not like the Tories, because for a while, the Labour Party was in charge. Then 14 years after that, the SNP were in charge. Now, after a failed referendum attempt, many account for saying victimhood, the SNP are now going to try and go for their referendum. As you can tell, I'm not a big fan of the Nicola Sturgeon and them. And I'm probably not selling this to you. But I want you to see what the other facts of the side are. So here you go, it's my video. Although Scottish people do not like the Tories, apart from the people who do, there's lots of reasons to criticise the SNP, lots of reasons to criticise all the other parties I just mentioned including the Tories. Although Nicholas says there's not an op she's not an opposition, with the help of the Greens, she's been allowed to do everything she could because her votes, her polls, have, things have been able to help because of the SNP's allowance with the Green Party. Because the Green Party is the same party. Less seats for the Greens, less seats for the SNP, more seats for the Unionist parties such as the Lib Dems, oh, no, no, weird I'm saying that, the Lib Dems, Labour, and the Conservative Party. I will be voting for the Conservative Party, unwillingly, unwantingly, with Douglas Ross and Nick, um, sorry, I was going to call it Nicola Ledger, Jesus, Louv Davidson as the two Conservative members of the Hollywood Parliament. Although... The SNP have been in power for so long, we need to tell them 
although there's a lot of things they've said, which has been, I would say, annoying, unlikeful. I mean, Douglas and Luth have both said stuff, like the assisted suicide thing. That was the Luth. She said that. Although they have both said things that are not helpful, who is better? Keep the same thing for a while longer and see the country fall beyond its needs. Because I don't know what the hell my future is going to look like now with the SNP. And if they go for the independence referendum, fuck me if I know what that's going to look like. Just saying. That's if they go ahead. With the Conservatives, I actually have a bit of choice. I actually can feel at an end of division. An end of no referendum. And a chance to rebuild Scotland. Although they're not likeable, they're our best chance of saving this country, it's keeping our ties to England, saving the United Kingdom. Because when we lose the United Kingdom, it's not just us that's going to suffer, England's going to suffer too. Because goodbye UN trade agreement, good knows if our loyal navy is going to be useful. You know, because it won't be our navy anymore. It will be the English Navy, or the British Navy, and the Scotland will have to defend itself. Probably get invaded by the English. But that's what I'm saying. Right now, we don't get much choice in what we want to vote for. But right now, I only have one thing to choose for. Vote for local area. I'm voting Conservative because, again, as much as I would love to... Where did I flow it? Okay, I threw it somewhere, but I don't know where I left it. Oh, no, I did. There it is. As much as I would love to vote for the Reform Party, which, as you can tell right at the start of this video, I agreed so much with, like, the turn of our freedoms, they start the economy, start the education, and end these absolutely destructive things the S&P have forced on us as citizens. The Tory Party have some good people in there too. They're not the best. But like with England, they're damn better than the Labour Party. And in Scotland's version, they're better than the SNP. No one's perfect in this. But when maybe we can get a few years of Tories, maybe, or more, less power of the SNP being in power, or less as powerful as they could, so we can stop them from putting any more radical ideas into the Hollywood, Hollywood bubble, which they seem to think everyone agrees with, although they don't. We can save a little bit of Scotland left. I don't agree with the idea that we can save the, the SNP from winning a huge majority, but I would love to believe I could actually live in a world, in a future, where Scotland has ended division, where there's no referendum, no divisive referendum that would destroy the half the country, literally, and rebuild a new Scotland, where the Conservatives will have the full-fledged power, where we could actually give them an opposition they could stand for. And maybe we won't be wasting money regardless on things that we don't know where the money's going. Like, two billion pounds just missing? Like, where does the money go? Like, we're not supposed to know about this stuff? Are we stupid? Like, we're supposed to be stupid, but are we that stupid? No, we're not. We want better for Scotland. We want better for the country. If I was to go for politics, I would love to do this. And I would sound a lot more clearer than I do now. So I've got four more years of percolation and all you guys to support me. And if you do support me, please be sure to like, share and subscribe to all my social medias. Because I'm prepared to go a little bit further. And this is one of my many live videos I'm going to be doing. And I hope you guys did enjoy it. Although it was a kind of mess. I hope you enjoyed watching it. I hope you share this video with your family and friends before they vote in today's election polls. If they don't, well, show them anyway. Show this weird guy talking over the over ballot papers. There you go. <laughs> but my final word before the film cuts me off, 
I would say, if you're voting in the election this year, today, vote tactically. What was your earlier before the SNP took over? Was it already SNP? Well, go and give in the whipping ass of the opposition parties. If your party, the closest party in your area, go and look at the last time there was a poll in the actual area, no, the actual results that came out last year or the year before with the Scottish elections. Was your area about to hit Tory? Was it about to hit Labour? Go and vote for them. Because we need to tell Nicola that Scotland doesn't want to become independent. We want to make sure we work with the union. We want our children to be able to go to London, get excellent jobs, become managers, financials and bosses and become the absolute supremes that we want them to be. We want our children to succeed where we want them to go to Oxford University. We want them to go to Edinburgh. We want them to be successful. We want ourselves to be successful. We, we want to succeed as people. But the SNP are floundering money everywhere. They're making themselves look embarrassing. They want to put a divisive referendum and we're supposed to be okay. I can see us looking like another Northern Ireland situation where this doesn't need to be with an actual damn border where 70% of our trade is with England because it goes to Europe. We don't even know how it's going to look and we're supposed to vote for this. But I say I'm voting Conservative because not I want to because it's a tactical decision to do. Vote tactically. Vote the area that you were most likely to have an opposition and maybe we can see a blue, yellow and red country again. And maybe we'll see Scotland is the freedom country that we wanted. Thank you. And hope you had a good election day. And see you in the next video. Please be sure to like, share and subscribe to Healy Goes Again because this is all the content videos you get to see all the time. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And please be sure to have a great day and hail the Empire. Thank you.